you know, I'm not going to run through any of the uh, sort of introductory material to uh, Carlton Watkins and, and who he was and what he was up to here at the Comstock. But uh, if anybody um, is interested in that and missed the uh, talk a year ago, um, you know, I recommend you review that one for, for all the background information and and sort of why I'm doing this and, and what Watkins was, was doing up here and, and what what kind of a person and photographer he was, uh, really. But uh, today we're going to jump right into some new photos. And, you know, I see my, my, all right. So we're going to um, start up here at the Sutro Tunnel. Um, I'm just going to bring another image down. And uh, from there, we're going to head up Seven Mile Canyon, or actually a Six Mile Canyon, and, and then we're going to uh, divert into a Seven Mile Canyon and take a look at the land and, and the Winfield Mill, and then on up to uh, the old cemetery that overlooks town and the Utah Hoisting Works, and then get right over to the north end of Virginia City, see a few uh, shots, um, particularly there in Cedar Gulch. And then move on over to uh, to actually the Flume area where Watkins took a, a number of panoramic photos uh, looking down and, and northward into town. And then we'll uh, go over to the uh, to the Consolidated, and we'll finally end up um, looking back down the uh, the Sutro Tunnel uh, route, actually from just. Uh, east of the uh, combination of ways. So, you know, from the, the, this is kind of the line that the Sutro Tunnel makes right here. If you can see my cursor. And uh, Watkins spent a fair amount of time shooting um, up and down this trend. And it, it sort of shows a, a blank in my re-photography, which is right here. There's some really neat old uh, Watkins photos of of the shafts that went down to uh, to service the tunnel. And uh, I, I hope to be able to get to those at some point. But this is basically what we're going to talk about tonight. So starting at the Sutro Tunnel, um, he was out here in 1876. And, you know, I was kind of surprised when I shot this because my understanding was the Sutro Tunnel had been going for maybe seven or eight years at this time. But the uh, the dump there is is tiny um, by comparison today. So I I think, you know, maybe they were going, but it wasn't really going full steam ahead until maybe just after 1876. Uh, you know, certainly it uh, intersected the important mines underneath Virginia City and, and I think 1878. So they must have made a lot of progress in a couple of years is sort of what this photograph tells me. But what that looks like today is a, is a new housing development going in on this uh, nice, ripe, flat just outside of Dayton. Uh, tough to not build houses here, I guess. And you can see, you know, the extent of the dump uh, today. That, that's a huge dump up there, um, representing three or four miles of, of underground workings. But, you know, the landscape behind it is uh, pretty much uh, not too much changes there. And, you know, I wonder who's who's in this buggy here. Um, perhaps it's Sutro himself. I don't know. Maybe maybe it's one of the angry investors wondering why it isn't moving fast enough. So here's just a shot of, you know, what a basic re-photograph re looks like. Um, you know, I'm down here just off Highway 50 to, to get this location, shooting back towards the uh, Sutro Tunnel portal. And, you know, this is what pretty much all of the uh, re-photograph setups look like is uh, something along these lines. So we're, we're up uh, into Seven Mile Canyon now. And this is a, a canyon you can still drive up. There's a road there. It's a pretty crappy road, but uh, you can you can get through there in a four-wheel drive okay. And, uh, you know, it was just kind of chock full of of milling operations in the day. And, uh, you know, you can see the, the cordwood stacked up over here for, for fuel. You know, massive amounts of wood were uh, brought into all these milling operations. You know, it's it's easy to see how the how the eastern side of the Sierra got uh, deforested so so quickly and so effectively, because you know there was literally dozens of mills of this size um, 
going through massive uh, quantities of wood every year. But uh, this is what the uh, the land mill looked like back in the day. And this is what that location looks like today. Um, it's basically uh, been, it's reclaimed itself. Uh, you can see my pickup down here in the lower left. I'm actually parked on a flattened out area of some of the old tailings from the land. But otherwise, there, there's very little to see here. I mean, if you get get out on your hands and knees, for sure you can find, you know, bits of glass and nails and all the typical relics you expect around the old mill sites up here. But the, the trees have, have really taken over here. And, you know, thankfully, uh, this shot was taken from a south-facing slope, so I could actually get the view. Um, oftentimes, he was shooting from a north-facing slope, which now has a lot more trees on it. And, you know, those are, are difficult just because you often wind up thinking, man, I'm pretty sure his camera position was right behind this tree where I can't see anything. But this is what, uh, you know, this is how a very typical view of how these uh, canyons um, coming off the Comstock load have changed over the years. You know, almost no trees in, in these old photos um, except some small probably pinion and juniper and some of this may actually be bitter brush it's it's a bit hard to tell what it is because it's it's small and then working our way on up the canyon to the to the wind field uh, again similar theme uh, you can see all the cordwood stacked over here on the on the right hand side uh, you can see the the mill workers uh, have come out to uh, to grin for Watkins and you know, maybe we've even got a couple of uh, women here at at this place. And, you know, when you see women that looks like they're wearing aprons, you might think, well, was this the uh, the cookhouse? You know, what was going on here? But uh, a lot of detail in his photos. And, and when there's people, it's, it's usually uh, much more interesting. And this is how that location looks today. And, you know, the road pretty much in the same place it was, uh, 100 and... 48 years ago, of course, you know, admittedly in these narrow canyons, there's not uh, too many uh, options for roads, but it's interesting to me that the old uh, roadway that went uh, right through the, the windfield operation is, is still the road we use today to get up and down Seven Mile Canyon. And then we're uh, finally uh, up to the top of the canyon where we can get a view out over Virginia City. And this is what it looked like in in seventy six. Um, Watkins was standing on a, a small old uh, cemetery site, um, actually taking specific shots of the uh, the Sierra Nevada mining operation here, with uh, Virginia City in the background. And this is probably the uh, you know last time I gave this presentation, people asked me you know how many times do you have to you know, go out there and get the view until you get it right. This one, I've lost track of how many times I've reshot it, and it, it still isn't quite right, and it's, you know, it's not giving me any more pleasure the more times I try to do it. But uh, I've shot this thing a lot of times, and uh, if you uh, sort of notice the uh, the little cemetery down here in the in the lower right, you know, everything else looks pretty good. The mountains look good. The, the Sierra Nevada mine looks pretty good. But there, there's something uh, misplaced with this cemetery, and it just it doesn't quite come into the view exactly the way it should. So you know, this is a, a bit of an iterative process on this reef photo photography, and uh, sometimes you know you get it the first time right out of the gate. But uh, if there's a lot of things in the foreground and the background that need to be lined up, it it becomes uh, you know complicated rapidly. And this cemetery has been a real uh, conundrum for me. I've almost wondered if the fence hasn't moved somewhere in the last 150 years. And uh, this is probably the, the second most re-photographed uh, photo that I've worked with. And, you know, it looks so simple, right? A, a straight-on shot of a of a nice conical-shaped peak there with the, uh, the hoisting works parked in front of it. But... Man, I'll, I'll tell you, it took me uh, six or seven times to, to get this one exactly right. And, and it was about getting the right elevation on the slope behind me 
to get this perspective properly. But uh, finally did, and this is what it looks like today. Again, a common th theme, a lot more trees, pinion junipers in this case. Of course, it always looks like there's more trees and vegetation in a color photograph. So you sort of have to take that in mind. But I, I really like this shot because you, know, you can see that back in the day, the, the hill there just looked like it had taken a haircut. And, you know, there's a few uh, small trees in this view that I think might actually be grown trees today because they're in exactly the same place. And today there's a bigger tree there. But I won't waste too much time with this photo because I've got a, a better one at the end where we can discuss some some trees that sure. that Watkins captured. And, and I think they're still there today and they show up in my photograph. So a little bit of an interesting sidelight on the trees there. So we've uh, we've gone over to the the north end of Virginia City now, and we're we're looking north actually back at the uh, you can see the Sierra uh, hoisting works here now, and and this is actually that that peak that we were just looking at. But the main subject here is the Sierra Nevada mining operation. This is what it looks like today. The main difference here, really, uh, you know, in addition to the trees, is the, you know, the the dump is just a heck of a lot bigger. So this thing had a significant life after Watkins was here, and they pulled a lot more material out of the ground and expanded their dumps significantly after 1876. And then uh, we are. <clears throat> actually uh in in cedar gulch down down in the woods at this point um looking at the mariposa mill and the cedar gulch it was just completely full of mines and mills back in the day uh, you can see that there's there's not much space left to build things down in the flats of the valley here and this is what it looks like today sort of as best as i can get it without uh having myself behind a tree. There's so many trees here that, you know, I probably haven't captured the exact camera location, but it's the one that works best where I actually have a view of the old photo. And, uh, you know, this gives you an impression of what it's like working on these north facing slopes. They're just, they really are carpeted with pinions and junipers today. But, you know, again, the, the main road network is more or less, you know, it was in place in 1876. Uh, we're still using it today. You can see the highway uh, coming up out of town and headed headed for Geiger Grade right here. You know, that was one of the old main drags in, in 76 as well. And uh, here we're just looking uh, actually from the, top of the north consolidated dump i'm i'm looking back to the west off the west edge of that dump and you can see the the level of activity here in cedar gulch uh, and the shocking uh, lack of any sizable vegetation really and what it looks like today color it up to uh, to, to really get the trees on fire And then uh, we get right into town, and I'm I'm shooting just off the uh, the east flank of of B Street, where it uh, m makes a little curve to the west, just uh, right above town and right above the main street there. And uh, you know, I'm not really sure why Watkins took these photographs. They're they're not his typical photograph of a a big. Uh, scenic uh, operation with lots of stuff going on in the foreground and the background. It, it really seems to be a photo of a bunch of small houses um, along the, the main roadway in and out of town here. So not really sure what the story is behind this one. But this is what it looks like today. You, know, you can see that we've uh, lowered the roadway a bit and uh, broadened the, the curve out there so we can attain uh, massive speeds of 30 miles an hour um, 
they could only dream of those speeds in 1876. And, and this, uh, of course, is uh, just where it was. And I, I guess I should point out for people who didn't see the prior presentation that the common theme in the uh, slides here is I'll have, you know, Carlton Watkins uh, photographic information and the source of it up in the upper left there. So you can, you know, do control click on, on all these links and they'll take you right to the, uh, the places where I found these photos. And uh, often they're, they're nice high resolution photos that you can download. And then I've got a map over here, which I just uh, pulled out of Google Earth, putting my uh, camera coordinate on it. And then the information in the, in the bottom right there about the, uh, the time and the date and, and the real coordinate if, if anybody's interested in these things. So here we are in actually the same place. I haven't moved my feet a, a single inch. I've just rotated the camera position about 45 degrees, and we're looking uh, right down the uh, Nevada State Route 341 today, which is the road heading north out of town and going over to Geiger Grade with the uh, Sierra Nevada operation here in the in the far right. This is what that looks like today. So the, you know, the main entry of, of commerce in and out of town uh, wasn't too much different back in the day than it is right now, actually. So you can see I'm, I'm just off this uh, bend of, of B Street here, right above the main you know, C Street and then Highway 341 here. Now we've uh, finished up at the north end and we're up on the, the flume. Uh, this was the uh, the waterworks, uh, getting, getting water into town, getting fresh water in. Virginia City was blessed with uh, plenty of water, actually too much water, but uh, none of it was was usable water. It was highly mineralized. It was very hot. It was pretty nasty water. So they had to bring a, a water supply in, and that came in uh, through some pipelines on on this flume up above town. And uh, Watkins was up on this flume, and he made four photographs that I know about. We'll start with the one looking uh, more to the south over the divide, and of course, um, you know, Gold Hill would be uh, just just out of view here. And then he swung his camera around, and he moved position slightly to get the entire panorama of Virginia City. And this is uh, what it looked like on St. Patrick's Day a few days ago. So I've tried to put together a collection of photos that kind of shows Virginia City throughout the seasons too for anybody who hasn't been there. It's it's really a beautiful place and, and, and changes rapidly this time of year. So you can see the, the flume way is still there. Some of the pipeline is actually still there. You know, you can see where people have come up here with cutting torches and removed some of the pipeline because they they needed a semi-cylinder of steel, I guess. I'm not really sure what was going on, but a lot of it's missing. But for sure, you can walk up and down this. And uh, you you this is a nice re-photographic place because you sort of know, okay, I'm standing on a roadway that Watkins was standing on. So your degrees of freedom are, are constrained here a little bit on where exactly the old photo was. And of course, this is what it looked like back in the day. And uh, this one is not bad. Um, the re-photograph is good, but it, it's not perfect. Um, and I know that because the, uh, the Fourth Ward schoolhouse here it is not quite lined up, and uh, you can see I've, I've got it out here a ways. So I'm hoping, you know, actually with the coordinates that I'm providing here, that somebody can come up here and uh, re-photograph these things and, and perfect them, because when you do perfect them, it makes a, a very nice uh, fade-in, fade-out project in PowerPoint like this. So this is where he was shooting up on the flume, and, and you can see in the, in the blue here, um, 
you know, where he sort of made his way to the north as he shot further and further to the north. And we'll take a look at all those as we go through here. So this is the next uh, camera swing uh, off to the east, uh, shooting over towards the combination. And this is just a, a phenomenal photo. Um, and this is one I, I found it at the Getty. And they've got these things scanned at unbelievable resolution. And I'll show you some uh, examples of that in a minute. And uh, this one is close also, but it is not perfect. And I, I know that because uh, there's a few buildings that still exist today. This this blue three-story house, and then, of course, the, the Mackey Mansion down here. And they they are just offset a little tiny bit in my re-photograph, so I know I don't have it quite right. And this camera position needs to be shifted maybe five or ten feet to the south and then it would probably be nailed. But anyway, you can see the, uh, you can get the gist of, of 150 years of changes here, even without that uh, perfection. But I, I wanted to show you a few details of the uh, Watkins photograph here. Um, you know, if you zoom in on it, you can actually see the uh, the, the name on the combination shaft here, right? It's unbelievable, the, the Chawler Norcross Savage shaft. Um, you can see these details. You, know, you can see individual uh, trees and bushes on the hillside behind it. So, you know, for, uh, for early days photographic technology, um, this guy really knew what he was doing, and, and he was taking photos on the big mammoth plates. So... When those things are scanned, the, the detail is amazing. And here's just some detail from the lower portion of that photograph. You know, you can read the, the names on the, the businesses down here. And I, I was talking about some of these with uh, Hans Music the other day, and he made the comment that you, know, you can actually almost count nail heads in some of Watkins' photographs. And I, I have no doubt that, that he's right, and it really, uh, you know, gives you an impression of the finely uh, detailed photos this guy was able to make. So when, when somebody has an original and they're willing to scan it at high resolution and post it up on a website for people like me to download and use, it's, it's really a beautiful thing because normally, you know, we see an okay scan, but not, not a brilliant one like what the Getty's putting online. And, you know, you can see... The, the Mackey Mansion here. I suppose John's having a sip of whiskey in there at the moment. The next uh, re-photograph up the uh, flume was uh, looking down Six Mile Canyon at the uh, little peak here known as the Sugarloaf with the uh, fabulous St. Mary in the Mountains uh, church here. And uh, I actually shot this one uh, a few years ago. This photo is from uh, 2020, and it was a pretty good re-photograph, but it, it wasn't quite perfect. You can see the, the steeple on the church here is uh, moving around on me when I fade in and fade out here. So I came back um, just a couple days ago to uh, to get it again. And I think I've just about perfected his camera position and, and can now say that, you know, his camera was probably within a meter of where I took this shot. And I, I know that because of the, uh, the the steeple on the church is behaving properly. And if you see this kind of mint green building down here, this was present back in the day too. And I've, I've almost got this front window lined up in that photo. So... You know you've you've gotten it when you've got the foreground, the midground, and the background all all working together for you. So this coordinate I'm showing here is is a pretty good one from from that location right there. But you know, just to to keep it interesting, uh, so that was a, a photo that I found on the uh, online archive of California, which is sort of the standard resolution scan. The Getty has this exact same photograph, and, and we know it's the same one because the, 
the same uh, group of guys is down here grinning for Watkins. It all looks the same. Uh, this came out of an album of Watkins photos that they have. And I thought, well, okay, this this should uh, re-photograph just exactly the same way as the, the one from the online archive. But in fact, uh, it doesn't. So I, I think there's probably some subtle differences in, you know, the scanning or the ultimate uh, reproduction of these photographs. Maybe there was a slight bit of distortion or because the photos are 150 years old, maybe they've shrunk and, and shifted and changed a bit. But, uh, you know, this one doesn't really line up at all, even though it's the same photograph from Watkins. So, you know, once once I kind of got to this point, you you have to ask yourself the question of, well, what does it mean to assign a coordinate to a Watkins camera position? <laughs> because it sort of depends on which uh which photo you're you're utilizing to to play these games. And you know, this is one of the many ways that re photography can uh go down a rabbit rabbit hole rapidly in the you just don't know what has happened to these photos in the last 150 years. You know, the distortions due to aging of the uh, photographic media, how it was scanned, uh, all sorts of things can can ultimately produce a slightly different version of all these. And I, th I think that's what happened between the uh, the Getty version and the Online Archive of California version. But nonetheless, this is a stunning photograph, and you can zoom in on this thing uh, all day long. If anybody's interested in looking at details of 1876 architecture in Virginia City, uh, definitely go to this Getty website and download these photos because they're they're incredible. And then his uh, last of the four uh, panel panorama, he was shooting uh, up towards the north end of town, and just for reference, so uh, we can see the Sierra Nevada mining operation here again. Uh, this would be uh, what ultimately became the uh, the North combination in here. And again, this is a standard uh, resolution scan from Online Archive of California. So e even at, at the screen uh, detail, you can see the difference in, in, in scanning of these things. But this turned into a pretty uh, faithful uh, re-photograph. I, I think uh, the location is pretty darn good here. And I, I have some confidence in that because the, uh, the the road network of Virginia City, which really hasn't changed any over the years, is, is faithfully in place as it was in the 1876 photograph. Okay, we're done with the uh, flume shots. We're going to head over to uh, the, the ridge line just above the uh, the combination. So we're we're kind of looking back the opposite direction now. Um, the, the flume shots were were taken from up here on the slope of Mount Davidson. And again, this is from the Getty, so it's a really uh, high resolution scan of of the consolidated and, and then the town in the background. And, and it's interesting. Uh, you can get a sense of the uh, long camera exposures with all the, uh, you know, smoke smoke plumes coming off the uh, the operations here in town. So this is what that looks like today. And again, here's one of those places where I find myself on a north facing slope, and uh, just about no view really, except that I can see the uh the fabulous church here right in the middle of the view and that that was really my my one way to make sure that i got this one lined up properly and it it indeed does work and there's uh, saint mary's in the mountains in 1876 and uh Yeah, this was a an interesting shot, and I so I've just backed up a bit. I was actually standing on this bold outcrop to take that previous photograph, and uh, 
you know, I have to conclude that uh, Watkins had his tripod set up on top of this with his camera mounted on it. And indeed, there is room up there to set up a large tripod. Um, but, you know, he he enjoyed a good view. And when, and when he could take a few steps and get up on a high point and, and shoot it, uh, it appears that he did. So now we're moving uh, back down the the sort of surface projection of the Sutro Tunnel. We're, we're moving uh, south out of town here. And by the way, these uh, these clouds that are in some of the, the Getty images, these are probably early attempts at, at Photoshop um, because as you probably uh, witnessed in a lot of the other Watkins photographs, there's absolutely nothing to see in the sky. They're typically all washed out, and that's a result of the the film emulsions used back in the day. Um, they just they had to be exposed for so long that all the sky details got washed out. So I suspect that this was two photos put together in the end to make uh, this photo for the album that ended up in the Met collection. But, you know, nonetheless, it, it makes a more compelling image when, when a photographer does these sorts of things. And that's what that view looks like today. And then he just he went up the slope a ways to, uh, to make another one here. And he didn't uh, mess around with the sky too much in, in this photograph for, for whatever reason. And I don't know what time of year he was there, but uh, you can see some snow up on the slopes. It uh, probably looks kind of similar to the way I found it last Sunday in terms of snow level. And, and this snow makes me think it's actually springtime snow, so... I'd be interested if, if anybody's got a view on that. So I actually captured this, though, last uh, November when, when one of our first snowstorms was rolling off the Sierra and about to, to hit Nevada. And, and the view looked like this. Just before the snow came. Okay, this is the uh, the last rephoto along the uh, trace of the Sutro Tunnel, and uh, you can see in Watkins' old photo that there was you know a road network in place here for the infrastructure. This is one of the uh, shafts. Um, apologies, I don't have my notes on which one it is, but I think it might be Shaft Three. So these were were air shafts for the, uh, the tunnel that was directly underneath of them, and the Sutro Tunnel portal is just. Um, behind this ridge. So that's that's where we started off tonight was uh, looking up the tunnel. Now we're looking down it. And it looks like this today. Again, lots more trees. Uh, you can see the north-facing slopes on the right are virtually carpeted. The south-facing slopes on the left are are pretty much open and, and great places to do re-photography if it happens to be that that's where your, your subject took his photo from. So that's, uh, that's all the new stuff that I wanted to show you, but I've got one last uh, slide that's is kind of interesting because um, it talks to this question about trees, which every time I give a presentation about the Comstock area, the, the thing that people want to focus on, it seems like, is the trees and what, what's what's happening with all the trees. So we're, we're at a mill site on the, the Carson River. I, I took this shot um, back in 2020, I guess, and I actually gave this, uh, used this slide in a presentation for the Geological Society of Nevada at one of their uh, Christmas dinners. This is the, uh, the Santiago Mill down on the river. Uh, you can see lots of trees here, um, some probably cottonwoods along the river, uh, some maybe trees that they've planted around here, kind of looks like some fruit trees to me maybe, but you can also see a, a, a scattering of trees up here on this slope. 
And, and this, by the way, is a great example of the skies being washed out in most of the Watkins photographs. Uh, you can see the, the title of his slide up here in the upper left. It's the Santiago Mill, Carson River, Mount Davidson in distance. Well, you know, squint as hard as you want, and you can't see Mount Davidson in the distance. He could see it when he took the photograph, but uh, it didn't survive in his photographic process. But indeed, it's back there. Uh, you can see it. If you stand there today, Mount Davidson is in the background. Let's color that up so you can see Mount Davidson nicely. And this is what it looks like today. Um, you know, very little evidence of a big major milling operation down there on the river. The, the river, of course, in a desert environment will uh, reclaim itself pretty, pretty readily. But uh, let's take a look at, at some of these trees. So I'm, I'm just going to, I think you can see these red circles. I've just highlighted some trees and groups of trees, and I'm just going to fade in and out here a bit. And, and you can see that... Uh, in 1876, there were some little tiny trees there. And in 2020, there were some bigger trees there. But I think they are, in fact, the same trees, especially this grouping over here on the right is is pretty compelling because, uh, you know, it's the same grouping today. So here we have some uh, pinion juniper trees um, right above a a major milling operation that, you know, presumably was somewhat hungry for, for fuel, at least to, uh, to cook with and keep themselves warm and, and keep, uh, other things in the mill. If there was some kind of, you know, steam machinery or whatever going, but, uh, the, the trees, uh, don't seem to have been, uh, chopped down in 1876. And our, our common wisdom is that the miners kind of uh, devastated the area around Virginia City in their quest for fuel wood. So not sure. And, I, you know, I'm not sure I've uh, answered any questions here tonight. I've probably raised uh, more questions than, than answers, but uh, that's, that's kind of where I've gotten to. Uh, I need to thank uh, all the great folks at these online photographic archives for for scanning these things and making them available. It'd be very difficult to, uh, to play these kind of games without ready access to the photography. So thanks to these folks. And that's the end of my presentation. If there's any uh, questions, I'm, I'm gonna turn my, my camera back on. Okay, any any questions? Comments? Um, I have a question. Do you ever use like a a pole for your camera, like hold it above your head to try and re see over some of these trees that are right in the way? Or, or or is there a way of fixing the distortion that that would bring because you're at a higher spot than maybe he was? Yeah, I suppose it might kind of defeat the purpose, but you... You raise an interesting question, though, and I actually had to do that. I was chasing Watkins around uh, the Casa Grande area in central Arizona, and it turned out that he was probably actually on one of the old walls of that uh, prehistoric structure and had his camera set up there, which, of course, they won't allow you to do that today. So I, I put my camera up on a, a big pole and had my granddaughter help me, and, and we shot it that way and got a pretty faithful re-photograph, actually. So... Uh, yes, um, you can do that. I, I haven't tried to do that here at Virginia City yet. Um, for one thing, you know, most of the trees are probably 20 feet high, and that would get a little bit unwieldy. But, yeah, interesting thought. Not very Anybody shocking else? today. <laughs> well, you know, I, I'll, I'll, I'll chat then. I, I'm sure that if you've seen this presentation and you saw the one a year ago, you have probably seen enough Watkins 
uh, photographs and re-photography to last a, a good long while, if, if not perhaps a lifetime. So that's a lot of re-photography to, to take in. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Kelly. Uh, next month, uh, April 16th, would be the many myths at Many Myths About Marcus Daly. Hope you all can join us then. Yep. Last call for comments. Oh, Sam? Oh, yeah, your hand you. is up? Yes, I have a question. I was looking carefully at your uh, specifications on your pictures, and I noticed that the focal length of your lenses was varying over slightly, varying over small ranges, but still varying. Uh, but would, would the 1876 photographer, would he have been using a fixed focal length? Yeah, for sure. He would have been using a fixed focal length. So, 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 you, so, so it might be some small differences due to this or, 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 the, or, or uh, you know, there, there could be, but, uh, in theory, there shouldn't be too much difference. I mean, unless you get wildly different focal lengths. If you're within a, a few millimeters of, of the old photograph, you know, you should be okay. Yeah. But I, I typically have a, a zoom lens on my camera so that, that I can achieve the, the approximate view that I'm trying to get easily. And I usually like to get a little bit more coverage than the old photo, as you probably saw in here, so I can place that old photo in a little bit more of a visual context. So I, I'm actually not trying to shoot exactly the same viewpoint he is, but to capture his viewpoint in a little bit larger uh, viewing angle. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Mm-hmm. Those are good questions. Anybody else? Does anybody can anybody tell me why they didn't chop down the trees at the Santiago Mill? I was looking at that. I think it's crawling up the side of that hill would have been <laughs> asking for trouble. That's the first thing that struck me. Fair point. <laughs> how bad you how bad you want the tree? It's on the side tough. of a cliff. Uh, it it does. It begs the whole value proposition of a piece of wood, doesn't it? Yeah. How far you want to fall? <laughs> yeah, and you know it's it's crappy wood. You know, pinions are not great. The uh, junipers are even worse, and and the the trees weren't big. You're right. The slope was steep. You know, maybe it simply wasn't worth it. But you know, to me, it's kind of interesting because there's this common conception that you know the miners just mowed all the trees down and, and what they didn't take the, the Chinese took the, the trunks of them out and there was nothing left but you know in some of these places um, it appears that Watkins photos might challenge that uh, assumption well and for some of these operations they're hauling wood on a very large scale and so one pinion yeah. more or less isn't going to matter that's and right. So that's, yeah. I mean, they were getting it, I believe, and I, I know little about the comp stock, but I, as I remember, they were wagoning stuff in from significant differences, uh, significant okay. di distances, rather. For sure. And so, yeah, one yeah. little opinion more or less isn't going to matter. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Well, thanks, everybody, for listening. It was it was fun.